Number one says, what triangle congruence theorem could we use to prove that triangle ADE is congruent to triangle CBE? So we see the markings that they gave us of one pair of angles and one set of sides. So then we want to see if there's anything else we can mark on the picture that we know. And we know that vertical angles are congruent. So we know this angle is congruent to this angle. And that shows us that in each triangle, we've got two angles with the included side. So that would be the angle side angle triangle congruence. Number two, Han wrote a proof that triangle B, um, BCD is congruent to DAB, but his proof is incomplete. It's not incorrect, but it's incomplete. So we're going to have to add something. So how can Han fix his proof? So let's look at what he has so far. So he says that the he knows the two lines are parallel and cut by a transversal. So angle CDB, this angle, is congruent to angle ABD this angle because they're alternate interior angles, which is true. Um, so then they need to be congruent. He also says that side DB is congruent to BD because it's the same segment, which is true. So this one here is in both triangles. He also knows that angle A is congruent to angle C because they're both right angles on the picture, which is true. So then he concludes that by angle side angle triangle congruence theorem, the two triangles are congruent. So this is where he's um, missing something because right now as he has it on his picture, he's not showing that the triangles are congruent by angle side angle because he doesn't have the side between the two angles. Um, so what we actually do know is that within one triangle, he knows two of the angles. So he knows this one and he knows this one. And that's the same in this other triangle, has a right angle and then this same measurement. So what he needs to do here is add in a step to say how he actually knows that this angle is congruent to this angle. Because once he does that, once he proves that this angle is congruent to this angle, then he has angle side angle because he'll have it here and then he'll have this side in between. So we just need to add in the step here that um, by the triangle sum theorem, since all triangles add to 180 degrees, if you know two of the angles, are the same, then the third one has to be the same too. So by triangle sum theorem, um, angle CBD is congruent to angle um, ADB. Just add that in before that final step, then he would know by um, angle side angle that the triangles are congruent. Number three, segment GE is the angle bisector of both angle HEF and FGH. So this um, segment here bisects both angles. Prove that triangle HGE is congruent to FGE. So um, we know that, so we know that since GE is a bisector let's say is the is the angle bisector well we can probably just say is the bisector of angle hef that so so we know since it's the angle bisector that angle heg and um feg are congruent GE is also the angle bisector of angle HGF. So HGE, well, angle HGE and angle um, FGE are congruent. And then let me mark that on the picture as we put it in there. So we got this angle is congruent to this angle and also this angle is congruent to this angle. Um, then we also know 
the segment in the middle. So EG is congruent to EG because it's the same segment. So we know that. So let me mark that on here. And then that's enough to prove that the triangles are congruent. So therefore, triangle HGE is congruent to triangle FGE by angle side angle triangle congruence. Number four, um, we have two isosceles triangles here. So ACD, and they actually only have the one side marked here. So ACD is isosceles. So this should be marked congruent as well. And then BCD down here is isosceles. Angle BAC is 33 degrees. And then angle BDC is 35 degrees. And then it wants us to find the measure of angle ABD, so this angle here. So because we have isosceles triangles, um, we know that the base angles are congruent. So down here, this angle is congruent to this one. So we know this one is 35 degrees as well, which will actually help us find this one um, because we can do the triangle sum theorem which tells us that the triangle totals 180 degrees. So we can subtract off 35 and 35 to get 110 for that angle. So this angle here is 110 degrees. And then we also know that um, these two triangles are the same since they have a one tick mark and two tick mark side. And then this side is the same in both. So these two triangles by side, side, side are congruent. So we know that these two angles are congruent as well. And we know right around this center that that totals 360 degrees. So we can take 360, subtract off the 110 that we know for this angle, which leaves 250 degrees for these two angles, which are congruent. So then to figure out that orange angle, we would just divide this evenly by two, and that would give us 125 degrees for that angle. Number five, which conjecture is possible to prove? So first conjecture is all triangles with at least one side of five are congruent. That is false. Okay, so you could certainly draw two different examples where I could put this one is five and then I could put an equilateral triangle that all of them are five and those are definitely not congruent because their angles aren't the same um, and these side lengths are different. All pentagons with at least one side length of five are congruent. So again, false, a very similar thing. You could have a, a regular pentagon where all the sides are five and then you could just have a random pentagon. So it's that one, two, three, four five and this side could be five and those are definitely not congruent. All rectangles with at least one side of five are congruent. Now with a rectangle we do know the angles are set so we do know that all of these angles are 90 degrees um, but this side could be five okay and then you could also and then these sides could be two so you could leave it at those longer ones are five and then this could be three so these could each be two these ones could be three not going to be congruent. All squares with at least one side length of five are congruent. This would be true um, because squares have their angles are all set at 90 degrees and then they have all congruent sides. So if one of the sides is five, all of them are five. And so if you were to re or to, to replicate that and draw another square, again, all the sides need to be the same. So if one is five, all of them are five. And then it would also have all 90 degree angles. So all of those corresponding parts would be the same, meaning they're congruent. Number six, Andre is drawing a triangle that is congruent to this one. He begins by constructing an angle congruent to LKJ. So he's created this angle so far. What is the least amount of additional information that he needs to construct um, a triangle congruent to this? So he needs... Um, one side length 
and then one more angle measure. And I would say one side length, um, either LK or JK, so that it's touching that angle. Um, not super necessary because he could get um, one of the other angles, but I would do one that it's touching and then one more angle measure. And um, I personally, if I were going to put lengths to this, so I would pick one of the side lengths that it's touching. So I would say, like, just pick one, LK. So I would say the length of LK. And then I would pick the angle on the other side of that. So then you'd have angle, side, angle. So LK and um, the measure of angle L. You also could do um, side angle side if you wanted. So you could get the length of LK and JK. So making K the um, included angle. So if you did LK and JK, then you'd have a side angle side. Number seven, um, this is a straight edge and compass construction. C is the center of this circle. Um, B is the center of this circle, and we can see that B doesn't go through C, so these two are different sizes. Which segment has the same length as um, CA? So which has the same length as CA? So BA, that's the radius of circle B, not the same as circle C. BD, again, is a radius of B, so not the same. CB is a radius of circle C, CA is also a radius of circle A, so we know that those two are in fact congruent. And then the final one is AD, which is just a chord um, in this smaller circle, so there's nothing to guarantee its length.